Hello and welcome back to the stars everybody welcome back to Starfield where today we're going to be taking a look at all of the perks in Starfield and we're going to be ranking them here in our tier list. Now there is a ton of perks to go through in Starfield. I'm going to be giving my opinion on each of them. Feel free to disagree with me. This is also going to heavily depend on what type of playstyle and what you enjoy the most about Starfield. So that will probably come through on the tier list. We're just going to go right down every single tree and I will be talking about the most notable aspects of each of these various perks. So the very first one that we've got in the physical tree is boxing and boxing is the unarmed ability. With each rank of this you get more damage when you're punching stuff by 25% and then you also get some other bonuses where sometimes it can take less oxygen, sometimes it can disarm enemies. This is going to be either an S tier or an F tier perk depending on the build. If you're going with a strict unarmed only build, it's going to be S tier because you're going to want to have this. It's one of the few skills that get you damage with unarmed. If you're not going with an unarmed ability, and let's just say you're going with anything, which I think the majority of people are going to go for, it's going to be F tier because it doesn't really matter. Unarmed is also very sadly lacking in this game. There is no unarmed weapons at all. It is solely based on the suit that you're wearing, which is pretty lame. I wish that that was not the case. I wish that there was actually dedicated unarmed weapons. I mean, even in like Fallout 4, they did this a bit better where you could have like the power armor be a decent unarmed weapon and there was at least unarmed weapons. In Starfield it seems like they just throw out unarmed entirely and that is really really disappointing. We've even seen unarmed weapons in like the Fallout series in New Vegas where you can have a whole bunch of crazy like unarmed weapons where you can have like the displacer glove, power fist, the shotgun glove, like anything like that. Those would all be really cool to see in Starfield. Sadly, we don't get any of them, and I just feel like Unarmed is really, really neglected. Next ability is called Fitness. Fitness makes it so you get more oxygen. Oxygen is basically just stamina, and it's really easy to actually level this up. You just have to keep running around. And then the final level of this makes it so your sprint and your power attacks make it so you significantly use up less oxygen. And it is pretty significant. It does allow you to run around really, really well. If you're using Unarmed, then this one's going to be a little bit better, or uh, Melee, this one's going to be a little bit better. For any other build though, this one is still really solid. I'm going to put it A tier because like just having more stamina is going to be nice on any character. It's by no means like a necessity perk, but having it just to run around towns is a little bit nicer and having it to run around facilities is a little bit nicer so you don't have to worry about your oxygen constantly running out. Then we've got Stealth, and Stealth is one of the best starting skills in the game in my opinion. So Stealth makes it so that you're more difficult to see when you're sneaking around. That's always good. You also get extra damage whenever you're hitting sneak attacks, and it also makes you have extra damage whenever you're using a suppressed weapon, which almost every weapon in this game can have a suppressor on it, which is really, really cool. And that makes it so Stealth is one of the best perks in the game, and I'd put this up into S tier. There is technically one of your uh, Starborn abilities that makes it so you can sneak around easier, but I think that that's kind of not as good as Sneak. Sneak gets you more damage thanks to the Sneak crits. It also gets you more damage just if you put a suppressed weapon on, which most weapons do, so this is just a straight damage buff in most cases. And being able to not be seen helps you out with a lot of quests if you want to do that. It's also not particularly hard to level up stealth either since you can just go to planets and sneak attack things, so this one's fantastic. Even more so if you do the Ryujin quest and you get the stealth suit. The stealth suit makes it so stealth is even stronger than it already is and it's already quite strong. Then we've got weightlifting. Weightlifting is a fantastic ability. It is one of my absolute favorite skills. I'm going to put this up in S tier. This totally depends on if you want to be a loot goblin or not though. You don't get a whole bunch of carry weight in Starfield by default. You can quickly fill it up. There are a couple things that you can have though, depending on what your luck is. If you get your spacesuit leveled up and if you get like legendary spacesuits, backpacks and stuff, you can have extra carry weight. And if you get some of the other legendary effects on there, it really helps. But if you just want to carry around more stuff, weight training is going to be the most consistent way to do it. And this one gradually gets better as you level it up. So you start out being able to carry 10 more kilos, then 25 more kilos, then 50 more kilos, and then 100 more kilos, as well as the very last rank of it, makes it so that you get 50% resistance whenever you're getting hit to be staggered. That's really nice, because if you get staggered, it cancels your reload, which can be pretty annoying. And if you're going with a melee or an unarmed build, it's also really nice, since then you can just shrug off whatever hits you, and you can just keep wailing on it back if you want. Like weight training is really nice for those builds. And then we have wellness, which is another amazing skill in the skill tree. This one is super basic though. You just get more maximum health. This one's going to go right up into S tier 2. It's a super basic ability, but it's the best ability for keeping you alive. It makes more sense than going with any of the damage reductions. None of the damage reductions will get you as much value as health does. It's also better than something like healing or I guess medicine. 
and it's definitely better than food, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. If you weren't aware, in Starfield, you level up basically the same way that you do in Fallout 4, where you can just keep leveling up, and that gives you more maximum HP. If you have a perk that gives you even more maximum HP, and it's a percentage-based, this just gets better and better and better the more you level up and the stronger that you get. At the max, you get 40% more HP than you otherwise would, and that just makes it so you're even tankier and you're less likely to die from anything. So this is the best skill if you want to stay alive. All right, moving on to the next rank of skills. This is the next row down and talk about a decrease in overall value here. The next rank in physical is a little bit disappointing where next up we have energy weapon dissipation. This one makes it so you take less damage from energy weapons. This is 5% per level. And then the very last rank of it makes it so that you can reflect damage back to enemies when your health is lower than 50%. You basically, you never want your health to be that low, and if it's reflecting back to the enemies, it's probably not going to be doing that much anyway. It just doesn't do that much damage in general. Damage resistances are fine, but a lot of the time they're really not needed. This is not even really an average skill. I'd say it's a below average skill into D tier. There's not a whole lot of enemies that use energy weapons either. It's probably one of the more rare weapons. Most of the time they're going to be using ballistic weapons. And even then, ballistic weapons just aren't that great either for at least building defense towards. Then we've got environmental conditioning. This makes so you get more resistance to your suit, or I guess just more resistance overall. It's usually based on the resistances that you have on your suit, though. So you get airborne resistance, thermal resistance, corrosive resistance, and radiation resistance. And then you also just gain a chance to be ignoring elemental damage effects from the environment in the last rank. This one sounds kind of decent, at least on paper, if you're new to the game because you don't want to really get status effects. The main problem with this though is it doesn't matter. That You're always going to have medicine to fix basically any status effect that affects you. So long as you're not just sticking your head directly into the gas vents, this one is basically useless. It's going to go to F tier. It's one of the worst skills in the game. Don't bother going for it. And then we have gymnastics next. Gymnastics makes it so you can do a combat slide which sounds kind of cool, but it's basically useless in this game, so don't bother doing it. This one also makes it so you take less fall damage, which also is basically useless because you have a jetpack in this game, like 90% of the time. And then the last rank of this makes it so like you can jump higher than you otherwise would, which is actually more of a pain if you're on a low gravity planet. It's only kind of useful on a heavy gravity planet. Most of the time, if you're trying to use this indoor, you just bash your head on the ceiling and it's really annoying. And this one is more of a detriment than it is a bonus. I'm going to put a D tier because there are certain uses that it could be useful for. And it could be pretty good if you're not going to go with jetpack training and you're not going to go with a jetpack overall. But at that point, you're just handicapping yourself probably for a challenge run. Then we got nutrition. Nutrition makes it so that food is more effective. This goes up by 10% per level, except for the last level, which is 20%. So you have 50% more effective food. This counts for both item effects on the food and the food itself for healing. Food for healing is garbage. Never use it. it. It just, it's not good enough to be warranted. It's kind of okay in the early game, but the amount of weight that you have to take up and the amount of time that it takes is just so bad compared to healing any other way since med kits and trauma packs always heal for a percent total of your amount of health, which is just better, especially as the game gets later and later where food only heals you for a flat amount of healing most of the time. And its effects just aren't really that good, as well as you can't stack multiple food effects on top of one another. So you can't even stack like the XP buffs from other food together. It's just not really a great skill overall. It's okay. I'm going to put it C tier because early on it's decent, but then later on it falls off pretty hard unless you're just using it for the effects of it. And even then, it's still not way great. It's just like I can carry a little bit more or I take slightly less damage or I have slightly more XP gains. It's, it's just like such a big investment for such a mediocre payoff. And then we have pain tolerance. This is probably the most straightforward skill in the game, uh, even to level up. This makes it so you just take less physical damage. And then at the max rank, you have a 5% chance when you're in critical health. So when your health is in red, that you just ignore physical damage. But 5% is not good enough for that, especially since in your, if you're in critical health and you're playing on like very hard like I have been you're probably just going to get one shot regardless. And, you know, there's a 5% chance that you don't get one shot, which, I mean, it'd be kind of cool if that did trigger, but it probably won't. Uh, all you have to do to level this up, though, is just get beat up, so it's not that bad in that regard. But it's going to go, like, D tier. It's pretty bad. It's the same as the energy weapon one. It's not worth building for. If you want to be tankier, just build wellness up. It's way, way better. And then these ones, maybe you'll level up just so that you can go down to the other perk because it's pretty easy to get shot by ballistic weapons. So it's really easy to level this one up. But yeah, the, the early game stuff is much better than this mid game things that you get here. They're all pretty bad. 
Then we move on to the next tier down. So this is the tier three skills. And this one, we have cellular regeneration as our first one, which this makes it so you're more likely to recover from injuries. Uh, you also get a percent chance to just ignore injuries towards the end. And this is basically just, you don't get things like frostbite. You don't get things like burns. You don't get lung damage and stuff. We already kind of talked about this with the the chance to just ignore this. It doesn't really matter because you're probably going to have a ton of meds to fix any of these problems anyway. It's also kind of a pain to level this one up. And I would just say that this one's like D tier. It's it's just not really worth it. Again, meds kind of just outcompete this. You can buy tons of meds. You can have tons of meds on your ship. You'll probably find them all throughout the quest. They're usually laying around all over the place and you can fix any sort of status effect that actually affects you and not worry about it then. Then we have decontamination. Decontamination makes it so that you are more likely to recover from infections. So if you do get a status effect, it can heal over time. That That's basically it. This one is also pretty bad. This one's also gonna be another D tier. It is just not a perk that's worth getting a lot of the time. And then for our last one in tier three, we have martial arts. Martial arts is another melee or unarmed ability. So this one gets you more crit chance whenever you're using melee or unarmed. You also get extra chance to disarm enemies, and you can also potentially reflect damage back to enemies whenever you're blocking. That's okay. This only affects uh, melee and unarmed damage, I believe, when you're blocking. It doesn't affect like gun damage or energy weapon damage. So again, if you're going with like a dedicated melee or unarmed build, then this one is probably going to be like up into S tier for you because it's going to be one of your best skills, at least the first rank of it where you get extra crit chance. I'm going to put it like C tier and be very generous with it because it is pretty nice to have if you are going with one of those builds. It's just that I don't believe the majority of people are going to go with melee or unarmed just because the skills are pretty underwhelming. And then we move on to the final rank where our very first one is concealment and concealment is basically just ninja from Fallout 4. It, it's exactly like that where you get some extra bonuses from this like not being able to set off landmines which can be really good. You can also get like the chameleon ability that can be on suits if you hold still with this which can be pretty nice too. The main bonus from this thing though is that whenever you do a sneak attack, whether it be melee or unarmed or ranged, you get more sneak attack damage. Sneak attacks are already two times damage. With the first rank of this, it's two and a half times damage, at least for ranged. Three times damage, then three and a half times, and then four times damage with ranged attacks. And for melee and unarmed, it can go all the way up to ten times bonus damage. This one is one of the best skills in the game. It basically makes it so certain weapons are guaranteed to one-shot anything once you have one or two ranks into this. Like the hard target is insane with this. The max sniper, at least an advanced version, will basically one-shot anything if this is maxed out. I don't think there's anything that can really survive that besides maybe a Terramorph because they have a lot of HP in their health pool. Then we've got Neuro Strike. Neuro Strike is kind of a weird one. This one also counts for unarmed. And this one gives you bonus attacks basically with your unarmed where you have more of a chance to stun enemies. You uh, have EM damage on your fist, which can knock out enemies. So if they get fully affected by an EM weapon, then they fall on the ground and they can't really get up until you hit them again. Also, whenever you stun an enemy, at least at its last rank, you can knock down other enemies within the range, which is kind of cool. At least again, if you're going with a dedicated unarmed build. I'm going to put this one C tier because I'm going to be generous with it. I don't think most people are going to go with an unarmed or melee build. This one can be useful and you're probably going to build up these three skills if you are going with an unarmed build because that's basically all you've got, I guess, besides like sneak and concealment and stuff. But it's it's just kind of underwhelming how much unarmed and melee get neglected in this game. I wish that they had more skills that helped them out or if they had more abilities and more mechanics in the game that helped them out. They're just currently not all that interesting throughout uh, Starfield. And then our final skill is regeneration. Now regeneration makes it so that you can regen your health outside of combat. The last skills say that you can regen it during combat, but that's not true. If the combat is still going on, then it doesn't actually count. So the last two levels of this aren't as good. They're still nice because they regen faster, but they're really not that good at, based on what they do say, where it's like you can regen during combat. You really can't. It has to be after a fight is done and then you'll regen your health. This one's really nice to throw a point into or to throw all the points into and just make it so that whenever a fight is done, you're not using up medical supplies. It, it just saves you more medical supplies over time. So I'd say this one's A tier. It's really nice to have, but not really necessary in a lot of ways. And if you plan on just stockpiling meds, it's just not super necessary. All right, our very first skill in the social tree is called commerce. Commerce makes it so that you have better prices whenever you're buying or selling stuff. 
that's all it does. This one is fine. It falls off pretty heavy late game because by the time you're getting to late game, you don't really care about this. You're already maxing out any of the stores that you can buy from. It's kind of nice for buying ship parts though. This is the one place where this is actually pretty good. If you're, if you're going to be building your own ship, ship parts are going to be a very expensive investment and having like a 20% discount will actually make up quite a lot of credits overall. So if you're going for that, I'm going to put this C tier. If you're just going to be using whatever ship you get and you don't really care about that, then this one would probably go down to D tier. It's not really that good, but on its, on its best case scenario, it's okay enough if you need a skill thrown in there. Then we've got Gastro or Gastroomaly or however the heck you're supposed to say this. I'm just going to call it Gastro. This makes it so you unlock more recipes whenever you're cooking things. So you can go there and you can unlock more of the more unique food that gives you better bonuses overall. This one is pretty bad. This one's going to go F tier. I think this is one of the worst skills in the game. There's no real reason to be unlocking these foods. You can find them throughout the world. You can buy them throughout the world if you're really going for that. It's only really kind of good if you want to do like extra weight food or if you want to have damage resist or if you want to have XP gains. But none of those really matter that much, especially with how much you have to put into the skill to unlock stuff like that. I would just say buying them is going to be way, way better and a lot easier for you to do. Then we have persuasion. Persuasion is just making it so that people are more likely to listen to you whenever you do speech checks. And the speech check system in Starfield is a little bit strange. You can usually brute force it, and this allows you to skip a lot of quest lines, which can actually be pretty nice, especially on repeat playthroughs. On the first time playthrough, sometimes persuasion feels a little bit too strong because you can basically just skip to the end of a quest in a couple seconds, as opposed to having to actually go around and do stuff, which I don't really like the way they did speech checks in this, but this is undoubtedly a pretty nice skill, especially if you're trying to speedrun the game or speedrun particular quests or do multiple new game pluses. So I'm going to put it up into A tier. Then we've got uh, Scavenger. Scavenger makes it so that you're more likely to find stuff just laying around in boxes. This depends on the level as to what you're more likely to get. You can potentially find extra money, extra ammo, extra cams and med packs, and you can also highlight things on your scanner in the last level. The last level doesn't matter at all. You don't really want that. Finding extra med packs early on is really, really nice, and finding extra ammo early on is really nice, especially on New Game Plus runs, where you're probably not going to have a whole lot of that stuff, and getting an early advantage is pretty nice overall. I think Scavenger is going to be our very first B tier perk, because it's decent, but you don't need to put a ton of levels into it. Like, the first level doesn't really matter. Finding extra money is okay, but whatever. Finding ammo is good, finding med packs is good, and then the last level doesn't matter. Then we have Thief, which is our last level one perk in the social, or last first tier perk, I guess. This makes it so you unlock pickpocketing, which is pretty good, because you kind of would like to have that for certain aspects of the game. And then every level after this just makes it so you're more likely to be able to steal things from people. You can even steal people's weapons, which is kind of funny. Not really that necessary, but it is pretty funny. Thief, I would say, is A tier. You definitely want to put one point into this just so that you can pickpocket things. And then after that, if you want to keep pickpocketing, which does help you skip through quest lines quite a bit, and it can be pretty good on repeat playthroughs, adding extra points to theft is actually pretty good. And then we move on to the tier two perks in social, where our very first one is called Deception. And Deception makes it so that you are more likely to get piracy demands from ships if you try to like loot them and you also get better contraband scans to where they're less likely to find contraband on your ship. This one sounds kind of useful, but then you kind of realize that like pirating ships is just not very good, especially when you can just go over there and attack them and steal all their stuff and you're probably going to get way more money that way. And getting contraband scans is kind of nice in the early game if you want to be making money through contraband stuff. But even contraband stuff isn't worth all that much compared to just hoarding guns which aren't contraband and selling them. As well as you can also get scanners on your ship to make it so that they're less likely to find the contraband. So this one is very dependent and it's going to go into D tier. I don't think it's that great of a perk. Then we've got Diplomacy. Diplomacy makes it so that people are less likely to fight you or you can command them to not fight you. As somebody who just really likes combat in general, I basically never use diplomacy. It can be kind of useful for speech checks, and that's why I'm going to put it up into C tier. But I think just making it so enemies don't attack you doesn't help all that much, unless you're going with a pacifist run, and then diplomacy it would probably be pretty good. Then we have intimidation, which is the, the gorilla here. This one is basically the same thing. You can intimidate people. It gets you more speech checks, so it's also going to go C tier. It's okay for skipping through quest lines. It, there's a lot of skills like this where they're kind of useful for that. 
Intimidating targets, again, I don't think really matters compared to just killing them. You get to loot their stuff that way, and killing people in this game is not super difficult if you just want to build damage. And then we have Negotiation, which is also basically the same as the last two perks that we talked about, where you can bribe people and bribes cost less. You also get some speech checks from this. So, like, it's C tier. You can skip through certain quest lines with this. A lot of the time, money doesn't matter, so bribes are pretty nice to actually skip through the quest lines. There's a lot of just these kind of mediocre skills that help you skip through things, but aren't really that crazy by themselves. And then our last skill is actually quite good, and that is Isolation. Isolation makes it so that you get more damage resistance, and you get more damage when you're by yourself. You don't have any companions. This one's actually really good. The final rank of it makes so you get 40% more damage, and, and you're a bit tankier, which is really nice. The damage buff from this is really good, and uh, if you're like me and don't really care for a lot of the companions in this game, it's gonna go right up into S tier. It's one of your best damaging skills for any sort of build, so throw that one on if you can. Then we move on to the tier three perks in social, and this one is called Instigation. This one makes it so you can potentially have other NPCs fight for you. It can be kind of fun. It can be pretty silly, especially if you have like the one space power where you can have another thing that you reanimate. So you can reanimate something. You can have your companion fighting. You can force other enemies to fight. It's kind of silly, but it's C tier. There's no reason to be really doing this. Unless you just want to do like, again, another pacifist runner or something and you want other enemies to fight. Leadership can also be pretty good. This just makes it so your companions are better all the way around. You can get a companion XP faster, you can have them have more health and carry weight, and you also potentially have a, a chance of them just picking themselves up if they go down. If you're really into companions, then this one is an easy S tier because they'll fight for you and they're just better. They're also better pack mules, so you can put more stuff on them, which is nice. If you're like me though and you barely ever have a companion, then isolation is going to be a far, far better option than this. But I guess it just depends on how you want to play. If you're playing with companions, then it's then it's an S tier. If you're not playing with companions, it's going to be an F tier, and it's kind of the same thing with isolation. Then our last one is outpost management, at least last one in this tier. This makes it so you can get additional cargo links to your outposts, as well as you can put robots on there, you can produce faster stuff with outposts. This one's like C tier, this one's fine. If you like building outposts and you like gathering XP that way, you can do that, or if you want to be collecting a whole bunch of stuff to build a whole lot of things, then it's pretty cool. There's nothing in the game that forces you to build outposts though, it's just an optional thing in the game. Then we move on to the final tier of social where we have manipulation. Funny enough, you can actually get for free if you do the Ryujin quest, so you don't really want to put a point into this because the first point comes for free if you do that, which is pretty awesome. And this lets you manipulate people and you can send them to go do other things like open up doors. You can only command them to do one thing at a time, which is a little bit annoying though. I wish that you could do that more often, but it does actually come in handy for certain quest lines and since it is free, it can actually be pretty good. I'm actually gonna put this into B tier, it's okay. And then we have ship command. This just makes it so that you can have more crewmates on your ship. That's fine if you wanna build a big ship and you wanna put a whole bunch of crewmates on it. That's cool. You can also use them as pack mules, although if you're building your ship that big and you have that many living spaces, you're probably also gonna build a whole lot of just carry capacity on your ship. So at that point it becomes a little bit redundant and I don't think that this skill really matters that much. I'd put it into D tier. A lot of the ships just can't even have the maximum where you can have eight companions on it. If you're not building your own ship for this, it doesn't really help and most of the other ships that you can buy or the ships that you get from quest lines are gonna have three to five people on there maybe, which is okay, but eh, it's, it's just kind of all right all the way around. And then our very last skill in the social skill is called Xeno Sociology. This one allows you to force aliens to fight for you, which is kind of cool. It's again, another one of these, like you get to have a skill that has other things attack for you, but it's not that crazy. I'd put it C tier. It could be pretty fun in a pacifist run, but nothing that crazy. There's also one of the Starborn abilities that lets you reanimate bodies. So you could potentially take a person and have them fight for you, take an alien, have them fight for you, reanimate another alien and have them fight for you, and then have your companion fight for you. So you can actually be having quite a lot of minions go out and fight for you, but the minions are never gonna be as strong as you are if you just build for damage. First up in combat tree, we have ballistics. Ballistics makes it so you get more damage with ballistic weapons. The vast majority of weapons in this game are ballistic weapons. Like 90% of the weapons in this game are ballistic weapons. At least ranged weapons are that. So more damage is pretty nice. The last rank of this also gets you 30% more range. Range is effectively how far you can shoot enemies before your damage drop off starts to affect your weapon. So having an additional 30% is really good on most weapons. 
It's kind of insane on like sniper rifles that already have a base 100 meter range where you're likely not even going to be fighting at that range most of the time. But you give them another 30% on top of that and then you have all the bonuses that they can have thanks to the mods that you put on there. Basically they just have any sort of range that you see something you're going to hit it for full damage. Ballistics is really good. I'm going to put this one up into A tier. It fits really nice and it works really well with basically any build. Then our next one is Dueling. Dueling is the melee ability skill, which this one makes it so all of your melee weapons do more damage. You can take less damage. If you kill enemies with it, you can get health back. Most people aren't going to be using melee. If you are using a dedicated melee build though, this one's going to be S tier. If you're playing it normally, this one's going to be F tier. Melee is just as underwhelming as Unarmed, where every melee weapon in this game has the exact same attack pattern. It has the exact same hit range and it's just based on stats at that point. So just pick the strongest thing that you got or a weapon that has the best legendary effects on it and use that. And even then, melee is super underwhelming, especially against other melee enemies that can just block and then you just sit there and bounce off of them forever. Then we have lasers. Lasers is pretty cool too. Lasers make it so you get more damage with laser weapons, as you would kind of expect. The last rank of this though is really nice. It makes it so every laser weapon has a 5% chance of uh, triggering fire on enemies. Fire deals percent health damage which can be really, really nice. And this can tick multiple times. It's really strong with the cutter. It actually makes it so if you rank this all the way up, the cutter is the best thing for killing off Terramorphs most of the time, just because they have a huge health pool and you can just laser them for a couple seconds and watch their health just burn away. Enemies like human enemies that do scale up and have just damage resistance towards it, it's not gonna be that great on them. But then again, there's a lot of weapons that count as laser weapons. All particle weapons count as laser weapons too. So it buffs up them. And if you want to go with an energy weapon build, this one is really nice. I'm going to put this one A tier as well. Then we have pistol certification. Pistol certification gets you more damage with handguns. 10%, 25%, 50%. And then the last one makes it so you get a 25% chance of crit hitting after you kill an enemy for five seconds. That can be pretty nice. Handguns are not really one of the strongest options in the game, but they are still pretty strong. Like the, sh the star shard is incredibly strong in this game. Razorback is really strong. Uh, Urban Eagle can be pretty good. The XM2311, assuming you have bullets, can also be really nice. So I'm going to put this B tier. It's pretty good, but it's not as strong as some of the other options that you have for weapons. Then we have Shotgun Certification. This gets you more damage with shotguns. And then the last level of this makes it so that whenever you kill an enemy, there's a chance that you can knock out enemies afterwards. So you hit them and then you see the EM bar raise all the way up and knock the enemy down. Shotguns tend to be one of the strongest damage types in this game, and there's quite a lot of good ones. So I'm going to put this one up into A tier. It's really nice too. Then we move on to the tier two options in combat where first up we have demolitions. Demolitions make it so you get more damage with explosive weapons. So this is grenade launchers, grenades, and a couple other weapons that count as explosive weapons. There's a couple different ammo types that also count for explosives too. So keep that in mind. That's pretty nice. This gets you a little bit more damage. It also makes it so you have the arc whenever you throw out a grenade which can be kind of cool, so you can at least see where it's going to go. It's actually more useful in this game than probably any of the other Bethesda games because gravity affects your grenades too. So grenades are kind of iffy. Grenade launchers are pretty good, and some of the explosive weapons are quite nice though. Demo, I would say, is like another B tier. It can be pretty decent. It also makes it so you get damage reduction from explosives, which is good because it counts towards enemy explosives as well as your own explosives, and you can blow yourself up fairly easy with explosives if you're not being super careful. Then we have the heavy weapon certification. This gets you more damage with heavy weapons. With its last rank, you get damage reduction when you're aiming down sights with a heavy weapon. That can be kind of useful for certain weapons like the minigun or the magstorm. It can be pretty good on other weapons. It doesn't matter that much with heavy weapons tend to be probably the weakest weapon type in this, at least that are ranged weapons, not counting melee and unarmed. But this one, it's nice to have, but yeah, unless you're going with a heavy weapons build, I'm going to put it like C tier. It's okay. Then we have incapacitation. Incapacitation makes so you get more EM weapon damage because EM weapons don't really do damage. They kind of do, but it's more that you can knock out enemies quicker. That's kind of cool, but this is only useful in a pacifist run. And I wouldn't recommend you use EM weapons unless you're just doing a pacifist run because they're just really not good for anything else. You can kind of mix them with like melee or unarmed, but that's just basically trying to make melee or unarmed a little bit better. And that's kind of sad that you have to have another ability to make a different damage type useful. So this one's going to go F tier two. I don't think it's that good. Then we have rifle certification. This gives you more damage with rifles and it makes it so with the last rank, you reload rifles faster if you're standing still. Rifles tend to be one of the best damage types in the game. There's the most rifles in the game out of any weapon category. So this one's going to go up into A tier. It's really good. Next up, we have marksmanship. 
This is in the next row down, so the tier 3 skills. This one makes you have increased crit chance whenever you're firing non-automatic weapons. So any sort of semi-automatic weapon works for this. As well as if you're using a scope, at least in the final level, you have a chance of knocking down enemies. This one's really nice. Most weapons are going to be stronger in semi-auto anyway, and that's generally going to be the best weapons in the game. So just having more chances to crit is really good. As well as most weapons can have a scope on them, so this is going to be A tier. Then our next ability is Particle Beams. Particle Beams get you more damage with Particle Weapons. And for its last ability, you also get an extra 5% crit chance with Particle Weapons. The thing about Particle Weapons is that they are the strongest weapons in the entire game. There's not very many of them. There's like four, but they have like the best weapons. They have two of the best pistols. One of them I would say is the best pistol. They have the best rifle in the game and they have the best shotgun in the game. So this one is going to go right up into S tier. Again, you don't have very many weapons, but every weapon that is affected by this is the best weapon, as well as particle weapons count as both ballistic and energy weapons. So if you get ballistics or energy weapons, you also get more damage to them, because of course you do. And on top of that, they always count as whatever damage type they are. So if you're going to be using the Big Bang, it counts as a shotgun. So if you get all four of these skills, they all count towards it for multiple damage stacks. If you get the Inflictor, it counts as a rifle. If you get the Star Shard or the Nova Blast, they count as pistols. They're also all semi-automatic, so something like Marksmanship also gives them all crits bonus to this. Then we have Rapid Reloading. Rapid Reloading does exactly what you think it would do, where you get faster reloads with any type of weapon. It starts out with Ballistic Weapons, then it's Energy Weapons and EM Weapons, then it's Particle Weapons, and then you also just get a chance of avoiding interruptions when you're reloading, which is super nice. You also get an increased chance whenever you kill enemies to reload faster than you otherwise would. That's really good. That's really nice on any sort of build. It's not like a pacifist build. Even on a pacifist build, it's okay because you could you still reload like your EM weapons quicker. So this is an easy A tier. This one's really nice to have. Then we've got sniper certification, which just makes so you get more damage whenever you have a scope on your weapon and you're using that scope. This one's really good too. Sniper weapons tend to be the strongest weapons in the game, along with things like the particle weapons. So this is also going to go up into S tier because some of those particle weapons can also count as a sniper weapon. The inflictor does because you can put a scope on it. You, if you can put a scope on a weapon, it counts as a sniper weapon. So that counts for multiple weapon types. Heavy weapons like grenade launchers can have scopes on them, so it counts as a sniper weapon. Rifles can almost always have a scope on them, so sniper weapon. Pistols, at least four of them, I think, can have scopes on them, so sniper weapons. Shotguns are like the only one that don't have sniper weapons, besides the breach. The breach does count as a sniper because you can put a scope on it too. So even if you're going with any of those type of weapons, there's a good chance that you also have a weapon that counts as a sniper rifle, so you might as well grab this one too if you like using any of those weapons. It just makes so you have even more damage. It makes the Inflictor absolutely insane. Because the Inflictor is affected by this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill, and this skill. All in the damage tree. Not even counting any of the other skills like uh, Sneak or Concealment. So you already have all of these bonus damage perks stacking on top of a weapon that already has one of the highest amounts of damage in it. And it makes it so you can effectively one-shot basically anything at any given time. Then we have targeting. Targeting increases your accuracy when you're not aiming, so when you're hip firing. This one is okay. It's really not that crazy. It's probably one of the weaker skills in this tree. But the last level of it does make it so you can mark enemies so you can find them a little bit easier. Not that that's super hard to do, but eh. I don't know, C tier. This one's okay enough. It's average enough. And then we move on to the final tier of the combat skills where we have our very first one, which is armor penetration. Armor penetration is basically exactly as it sounds. Whenever you hit an enemy, you ignore a section of their armor up to 50%, and then it can decrease further after you get a crit hit, which is pretty nice. Having armor breaking on any weapon is good. This one's just going to be a, an A tier. It's a nice bonus to any sort of ballistic weapon, unless, again, you're using, like, EM weapons, but then you're probably doing a pacifist run, and then you won't take this, but on basically every other type of damage build, you will. Then we have Crippling. Crippling is a reference to Skyrim. I like that, where you have the arrow in the knee. That's pretty cool. That's about the only cool thing about this skill, though, because it's basically just a win more skill where you have an increased chance of knocking down enemies. If you knock down an enemy, they're probably not going to get back up and they're just a sitting target. And at that point, you've already won the fight. So th this also gets you more damage when the enemy is on the ground. But who cares? If you've already won the fight and the enemy's not fighting back, it doesn't matter how much more damage you have. It's not necessary. The fight's over. You just walk up to them and kill them with whatever, or you just leave them there on the ground. So this one's D tier. I don't like the, the crippling at all. Besides the 
the Skyrim reference. And then our very last skill in combat is called Sharpshooting. Sharpshooting makes it so that you get even more damage upon ranged crit hits, which is really good. This one's like an easy S tier because it doesn't matter what type of ranged weapon you're using, unless you're using EM weapons for a pacifist run, you always want more damage. Snipers love this, shotguns love this, pistols love it, any heavy weapons love this too. More damage is always better. Then we move from the combat tree over to the science tree, where we have a couple different abilities here. And science tree is a pretty cool one too. So first up, we've got astrodynamics. Astrodynamics makes it so that you can grab jump further or you can grab jump with less cost. That one is okay, and it's gonna go into our C tier. It's fine, it helps you out in the early game, it can help you out on new game plus runs. On later runs, especially if you're gonna go with ship building, it's not really that necessary because you can just have a ship with a better grab drive on there or more fuel and travel further. This is strictly a quality of life bonus, but it's an okay one if you wanna build for it. It's also really nice to have on companions. That, that's something that's really good. Then we have uh, Geology. Geology makes it so that you are more likely to find rare materials on surfaces whenever you're mining rocks. This one is pretty bad. This one is probably one of the worst skills in the game, mostly just because you can always fast travel to planets and buy the rare materials that you need, really at any point during the game. So this one just, it's gonna go to F tier. It has a little bit of value in the early game, and if you put one point into it, it doesn't matter that much. Because if you put one point into it and let's say you run over to Pluto, you can potentially go and get some more titanium, which you're probably going to need for a lot of early game stuff. But after that, getting the more rare things rarely matters. You either know exactly where those things are, or you can just buy them from any sort of shop that's around the place, or just wait a couple days for the shops to reset and then buy whatever you need from them. Next up we have medicine. Medicine's pretty cool. This makes it so that you just have better medical supplies, medical supplies that heal you for even more, and medical supplies that heal even faster than they already would, which is pretty nice. The last level also can cure afflictions, which is kind of cool, but mostly this one's just going to be one of the best things for keeping you in a fight longer. And if you combine this with like wellness, it's really nice. This one's going to go up into A tier. It's not as good as wellness just because you get so much more tanky from that. But stacking these two is going to be the best way to make you the tankiest, besides also maybe having a point or two to regeneration, where you can at least refill your health a little bit quicker. Then we have research methods. Research methods make it so that whenever you're researching anything, then you're more likely to just skip part of the research method overall, and you're going to be using up less overall stuff on that research. This one is really good in the early game. Later game it's going to fall off just because your research is going to get better and you're going to solve more stuff as it goes on. But putting points into this early on is really, really nice, especially if you want to go with weapon modifications. So I'd put this one up into A tier. This one's actually really nice to have. Then our last tier one in science is surveying. Surveying makes it so that you can scan things further away on planets. It also makes it so your zoom is much further than it otherwise would if you're using your scanner. And it can actually be further than most sniper scopes. I don't think it's as far as like the long scope, but I think it is longer than like the medium scope. This one's actually not too bad to have, and I would recommend that you put the first point into it if you're gonna go up to any sort of planet and scan stuff, just so then you don't have to be like right on top of things to actually scan rocks and animals and plants and whatever. So I'd put it B tier, at least for the first level of it. It kind of falls off after that though. It's it's just kind of a nice quality of life thing to have. For our tier twos in science, we've got botany as our first skill. Botany makes it so that you're more likely to harvest rare materials from plants. You can harvest more materials from plants. You can scan plants better. It's okay, it's D tier, it's nothing crazy. If you wanna be scanning planets completely, this one's pretty nice to have, but beyond that, it's really not needed at all. Then we have scanning. A scanning makes it so that you're more likely to find kind of loot on various planets, which can be okay. It's usually not the best because scanning for planet loot is just not as good as going for like quests that give you loot or going for the optional bounty quests and stuff where you're probably just gonna find better loot overall. So it's, it's another D tier. It's fine if you want to take it, but it's not way great. Then we have the spacesuit design. Spacesuit design makes it so that you have more mods that you can put on your spacesuit. This can be kind of nice to have. Most of the time this isn't super necessary though, because a lot of the stuff that you can find on spacesuits is already pretty good, but having more options is always nice to have, so I'm gonna put this one A tier, it can be pretty good. Then we've got weapon engineering. Weapon engineering makes it so you can put basically any sort of mods on your weapons, which is gonna result in the strongest version of weapons that you can have. So this one is gonna go up into S tier. It is probably the best skill. Even if you're going to the pacifist run, it's one of the best skills in the game since then you can convert lethal weapons into non-lethal weapons 
like the shoddy with the EM shells in it is pretty good for knocking out enemies and not killing them. So even on a run like that, it can be really good. You may also need to have another skill, which we'll talk about here in a little bit to get some of the other mods unlocked. Anyway, our last one in this tier is Zoology. And Zoology just makes it so that you can scan animals faster than you otherwise would, and you're more likely to get rare resources from animals and more resources from animals. This one's another D tier. It's similar to Botany. It's kind of nice to have, especially if you want to be scanning everything on every planet and map out the whole star system, but I don't feel like most people are going to be doing that, so it's just kind of a nice quality of life thing if you are doing that for some of the planets. Then we have Astrophysics. This one makes it so whenever you scan a moon or a planet, there is a chance that you will already find unique things on the planet, so this makes it so you don't have to go to every planet as often. You can also scan planets within the same area that you're in and potentially find more like landmarks from them. Can be kind of nice, again, if you're going to go for 100% scanning everything type run, but otherwise it's pretty D tier. Then we have chemistry. Chemistry makes it so that you can make better chems and that you can make more different types of chems as well as there's a chance of you getting multiple chems whenever you do make a chem. That's a very, very low percent chance that that happens though. And chemistry is probably one of the worst perks in the game. It's just so much easier to buy the chems that you're going to be using. Most chems in this game really aren't worth using anyway. And there's nothing really crazy that you can do. This is not like in the Fallout games where you can have like turbo that's absolutely overpowered and insane and makes it so something like Chemist is really strong or like Jet in Fallout 4 where that's also really strong or the other chems that you can stack on top of one another. In Starfield, the chems are pretty disappointing in this and just being able to make additional chems doesn't matter. You're not getting extra value from those chems. They're just more chems and chems aren't hard to find. Then we have outpost engineering. This makes it so you can make more things at outposts. If you want to be going to every planet, you want to be setting up outposts and you want to be building like your own big sandbox area, whatever you want to do. This one is pretty fun. If you're not doing that though, then you're probably just going to skip over this one. But assuming you are doing like the RPG thing and building up your own base and making stuff, then I'm, I'm going to put this one A tier. It's pretty fun to use. Then for our final rank of perks, We've got a Neutronic Fusion. I hope I'm saying that one right. I'm probably not, but this one makes it so you have more overall uh, energy with each of your ship's power. That is actually really good, especially on New Game Plus. This one is super nice to have just because more power is more better. You can put up your shields, you can put up your engines, you can put up your weapons more likely to max. Uh, you might have extra leftover for like the grav drive and stuff. If you're going to go into ship building, this one can be really nice too because it can make it so you make a lighter weight ship, but a more powerful overall ship because of this. So I'm going to put this one up into A tier. I think it's actually pretty decent if you want to level it up. It's pretty nice for the ship. Then we have planetary habitation. This one makes it so that you can build more outposts on more difficult to land on planets. The problem with this though, is that a lot of the planets that it's talking about really don't matter in terms of resources. There's also just not very many planets like the ones that they're describing that have like intense gravity or no atmosphere or something like that, that you would actually want to put an outpost on. It also increases the total number of outposts that you can have. So that's kind of cool. And if you want to be building all over the system, it's pretty nice. But overall, I'd say this one's like, C or D tier. It's okay. I'm going to put a D tier. I think it's okay, but it's really not worth getting a lot of the time. It's mostly just like if you really like the, the planet crafting, if you really like building up an outpost and everything and you want to put it all across the, the stars, then fine, cool. This can be kind of nice, but that's going to be more of like a personal project than something that's really going to help you throughout most of the game. And then our last science ability is called special projects. This allows you to craft various special things that you can't craft otherwise. This can count for weapons, it can count for suit upgrades, it can count for extra things that you can find throughout your outpost building. So this one can actually be pretty nice. If you're like me, you're probably just gonna put one point into this and call it a day because I just want the weapon bonuses from it. And for that, I'd put it like B tier. If you want to build up everything though, I could, I could see this being more useful for you. Then we move over to our final tree, which is the tech tree. This is mostly focused on the spaceship. So first up, we have the ballistics weapon systems. This one just gets you more damage with ballistic weapons. This one also recharges your ballistic weapons faster. That can be kind of nice. Ballistic weapons tend to be an okay option for ships generally. They're usually not the best option overall, but they are one of the more readily available options early on and you can buy some strong ones early on. So I'm going to put this one C tier. It's not bad, but there are better options than this as it goes on. Then we have boost pack training. Boost pack training is amazing. Boost pack training makes it so that you unlock the ability to actually use the boost packs 
which is really, really good. It also makes it so every level after this, it's just more efficient to be using your boost pack, which you can actually get around a lot faster with the boost pack because of that. So this one's gonna go up in S tier. Absolutely put one point into this at the start. After that, you can put in more points and just have a more nice boost pack experience but the first point is really, really nice. Our next skill is piloting. Piloting is pretty cool too. The first level of this makes it so that you can utilize the thrusters on the ship, which makes it so you can turn the ship a lot quicker. That is really, really nice to have, especially at the start of the game. Uh, after that, it makes it so you can turn quicker on its second rank. And then the uh, third and fourth rank make it so that B class and C class ships are also unlocked that you can play around with. And C-Class ships are going to be the strongest versions of ships that you can actually use. This one I'm going to put up into A tier. It is really nice to have. I would say put a point into this right away. After that, if you're interested in the B and C tier ships, then by all means max this one out. If you're not so much because you don't really need to, you can do like the Rangers quest and get the Star Guardian and that's an amazing tier one ship. Or you can do the Mantis's quest and you get a pretty decent tier one ship from that too. Then we have security. Security is basically lockpicking in this. So it's one of the best skills in the game. There is a lot of good gear that can be hidden behind doors and in locked boxes. Not always, it varies heavily in Starfield as to what's good and what's not. Once you get kind of used to which uh, objects tend to have good gear in them, you'll basically just go for those and ignore everything else. So that can be pretty nice. You don't need to max this out though. I'd put it to three ranks, that way you can unlock anything, but the fourth rank is just not really necessary. So I'd put this A tier. It's really good to have, at least put a couple points into this. And then we have the targeted control system. This allows you to lock onto enemies, or at least once you're locked on, you can go into the targeting mode. This basically slows down time and you can do a bit more damage per second. You can accurately target their engines and stuff too, so you can more easily board their ship if you would like to do that. This one's fantastic too. I would say put a point into this and then you can rank it up even further than that if you want. I'd put a B tier. It's really good. Then we have energy weapon systems. Uh, at least I'm hoping that that's what this one is. I'm going to pretend that it is if I get the icons mixed up. Because a lot of these ship icons look kind of the same. But I'm pretty sure that's EM. I'm pretty sure that's auto target. And I'm pretty sure that's particle. So I'm going to say that this one's energy weapons. This makes it so all of the energy weapon type weapons that you have on the ship do more damage. This can be good for knocking out shields. They also recharge faster. Um, energy weapons are a bit better than ballistic weapons that we talked about earlier and that ended up into the C tier. I'd put this one a tier higher into B tier. I still don't think energy weapons are the best option for ships, but they are okay, especially if you just want to put one on there and then switch to something like missiles or particle weapons as your second and third guns. They can be okay if you have one of them on there. I wouldn't recommend going for all energy weapons on your guns though. I feel like that's a little bit overkill. Then we have engine system. Engine system makes you have a higher top speed than normal. It can also make it so your boost comes back quicker. That can be kind of cool. The last rank of it can also be kind of good with players sometimes disengaging you. This can be kind of nice in like a cheese strat, especially if you want to build all speed where you fly backwards and then ships just can't catch up to you and you can keep shooting them. In most cases though, this is going to be a quality of life bonus to your ship and I find it to be okay. I'd put it C tier. It's fine. And then we have payload. Payload makes it so that you have more capacity on your ship. That's kind of nice. If you're going to go into shipbuilding though, you can make a massive amount of space on your ship. So it's really not necessary to have even more space, but uh, it's really good on like new game plus runs where you're stuck with the early game ships and maybe you can't buy a ship right away or make a ship right away that has a decent amount of capacity. So having a little bit more does help in that role. So I'm going to put this one C tier as well. It's okay enough. And then we have the shield system, which shield system gives you more shields than you regularly have. It was bugged. I think it's been fixed since it was bugged because it was bugged to where sometimes it wouldn't actually do that and it would actually count in reverse, I believe, or maybe it just wouldn't apply the correct amount, but it's supposed to give you more shields overall and more shields are basically the best way to survive in a fight most of the time unless you just have an immense amount of speed and you're kind of doing like those cheese strats, but I find those to be a little bit unreliable, kind of boring to play with, and just not super consistent. I think just building a big tanky ship is more fun and more engaging in a space fight than constantly like running away and then flanking around enemies. I feel like that's stronger, but not necessarily more fun. So the uh, shield system, assuming that it is working, is gonna be A tier. If it's still bugged, then it's probably going to go down to D or F tier because it's just not really that great then. But I think as of right now of making this, it has been fixed. Then we have our missile weapon system. Missile weapon system makes so you get more damage with missile weapons. Missiles are quite strong. They also have pretty long range, but they're not guided. Having this actually up is pretty cool and just having a full 
missile ship is really fun too. It's not super reliable and it's still not like the best weapons to be putting on your ship, but I'd put this B tier. It can be pretty nice. And then we got the particle weapon system, which this is just the best thing to throw on your ship. Particle weapons do the most amount of damage and they have the longest amount of effective range out of any of the ship weapons. Technically, the missiles can have longer range and higher damage, but again, they're not guided and they're not instant. Basically, these are just hit scan weapons. Really, every time that I build a ship, it just comes down to putting three particle weapons all on my ship and firing them all at the enemy at the same time because they're basically never going to run out of charge. They do really high damage and they just shred through everything. Yeah, this, these ones are S tier. They're the best option to be putting on your ship. They're really, really good. And then we got robotics. Robotics make it so you do more damage towards robots, as well as you can potentially make robots stop fighting or not target you and stuff like that. Robots are the least common enemy that you're going to be fighting throughout the game. Aliens and humans are way more common than robots. Robots do occasionally show up and they're good for certain quest lines. But a lot of the time, this is just going to be kind of a quality of life perk to have. So it's going to be like another C tier. It's okay, but nothing way crazy. Then we've got ship design, which ship design is really, really cool. This is probably one of the best things about Starfield is building your own ship and making it your own, even though it can be kind of confusing and frustrating to do the first couple times. Once you get it down, it is very satisfying to be building up your own ship. And this is also going to get you the best ships in the game. There is basically no other ship in the game that's going to be better than this. This is going to unlock more things for you to put on your ship. The only downside to this, though, is that building ships is very expensive. You're going to be spending a lot of money and a lot of time actually building ships. But other than that, I would put it S tier. It makes it so you have the strongest ship combat that you can have in the game. And then our last one is called Starship Engineering, at least on this tier before we get to the very last tier, where this one makes it so all of your ship systems repair faster than they otherwise would. And sometimes they can just repair automatically, which is really nice. This one is just a nice quality of life bonus as well. It's nothing way crazy, but it's good to have. And repairing your ships during a fight is probably the most annoying thing to do during the Starship fights. So I'd put it B tier. Then we move on to our final tier, which we have automated weapon systems. This makes it so all of your automatic weapon systems, whatever you put on the ship, just do more damage and they cost less when you're using it in target mode. That can be really good. The automatic weapons are really nice because you don't really need to think then just make your ship super tanky have a big shield and then just fly it towards whatever is trying to attack you and let the automatic weapons kill it this is probably the easiest way to beat ship combat in the game and i'd put it up into a tier it's really good it's not going to be as good as like particle weapons for actually aiming then we have the boost assault training this makes it so you can get more damage stats from your boost pack so you can light enemies on fire you can knock down enemies which is pretty good you can also kind of hover in place and slow down time when you're firing with this which can be kind of useful. It's just that a lot of the time, this isn't super necessary, especially if you just have a regular boost pack, you can usually get to positions and kill enemies quite fast. This is just kind of another win more option, sort of, or to where you can get to some kind of weird positions to hit enemies, which aren't always necessary. I can't think of any time where I've used this and thought that I couldn't kill an enemy in a different way or a more efficient way than like getting to a spot and hovering in place to shoot them. So this one's like C tier. It's fine enough. It's kind of fun to play around with. It's funny to light enemies on fire. And then we have the EM weapons system, which is our final one. And this one makes it so that your EM weapons cost less as well as have more damage so you can knock out enemy systems faster. Having an EM weapon on your ship is actually kind of nice. If you want to knock them out and you want to board them, that can be pretty good, especially in the early game where ship combat is pretty rough and potentially putting an EM weapon on your ship can make it a little bit easier. You can also do this with the advanced targeting though and that kind of works with every type of weapon. So I would say that that is a better option and I would say that this is kind of one of the weaker ones. So I'm going to put it seeds here. I feel like it's on par with like the ballistic weapons. I'd rather have targeting and particle weapons on my ship and just knock out a ship's engines and then board it if I'm going to be playing like that. Or I'd just rather have particle weapons and shields so that I can just tank through stuff and then shoot them to death as well as like upgraded ship design so I can have a better ship. But if you want to play like that, then the EM weapons are okay enough. And this is where I'd put all of the perks or the skills in Starfield. There is quite a lot of skills in Starfield and there's a decent amount of them that are pretty good. There's a lot of them that are kind of meh though. It, most of the skills in Starfield tend to linger towards the mediocre to bad side, which is not really that great, but there are still some pretty good ones. And with a game like this, just like any of the Bethesda games or an open world game in general like this, usually you can get away with building whatever the heck you want and it's not going to be that big of a deal. And it can be especially fun if you're doing challenge runs. So tell me your thoughts on the skills down in the comments below. Which ones are your favorite? Which ones are your least favorite? I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye bye, everybody.